Martin Sovolny for the Cloud Form Management Engine team in Red Hat, and he will speak about his work, I think. Hello, nice to see you all. Uh, first of all, let me apologize. I'm not good and, at giving talks and uh, making uh, slides, so you will see only slides that you have already seen, for sure. Uh, I would like to introduce you to a new product uh, in the Red Hat portfolio that's being uh, de developed uh, in mainly in the US, but also here in Brno. And it is this uh, new cloud forms, uh, which is a bundle of components consisting of a single component co called uh, Cloud Forms Management Engine. And I will start by showing you where we, where we actually stand. You have seen this many times before, but I would like to point out, point out some things. Oh, so, so this is the classical picture where a business used to have a data center or two, and it used to run some, some software in the data center. The virtualization is widely spread, basically, a large, a large part of the work, uh, workloads that are currently being run are uh, virtualized. Uh, where we are now moving is, is something like this picture, where, where businesses start uh, offloading their loads in, into the uh, public cloud. Different ones such as, such as uh, Google Compute, Amazon EC2, and also what, what's happening now is the, is the coming of the private cloud with various technologies such as uh, such as uh, OpenStack. Well, you have heard about OpenStack uh, today and how, how it's uh, fun to, uh, to install and uh, maintain and stuff like that. So basically, uh, we need a tool that will, that will uh, encapsulate all of this, that will uh, uh, sort of handle these traditional concepts with tradi traditional applications as well as, as the new concepts of, of uh, private, public, and hybrid clouds with, with, uh, with the new type of applications. The situation is uh, you, of course, cannot take an average application that's running in a bank or, or somewhere and uh, just put it in the cloud. You know that, that uh, for, for example, you are not guaranteed that your uh, instance in a public cloud will be running. But it's very different from the, from the classical, uh, classical situation when you take care of your, of your instance and you, you try to, uh, to yeah, have a, a long uptime, you try to, uh, to postpone updates, stuff like that. Just keep it running, keep it running. There will be a service window in a couple of weeks. Let's wait with the updates, stuff like that. It's very different concept than, <laughs> than, with, uh, than with the cloud. And uh, in the IT, everything has a uh, big momentum. Changes don't happen, uh, don't happen fast. So you can uh, be quite sure that those applications that, uh, that the companies run today will be with us for extra 10 years, maybe 15 years. There are many applications that, uh, that uh, don't have the vendors. The vendors went out of the business, but the companies still use them. The typical example might be hospitals, where they, they, do th do j they d just don't have the money to migrate a new system from a new vendor. So they are uh, trying their best to keep the stuff that's working operable and uh, not change anything. So, so the reality is, no one will rewrite all their applications and move them to the new architecture. No one will, will, will make our applications use things like Swift Fr from now on. You, you, you have to somehow handle the old uh, legacy stuff and uh, make, the, make the transition from the classical infrastructure-based stuff to the new cloud, cloud stuff, a uh, uh, gradual process where you the best you can do is support the same set of, uh, of, uh, of features from the, from the management point of view, so that you can, you can uh, keep your workflows, your, your processes that, uh, that are related to, to provisioning machines and to servicing your users. So this is when we are, and this is, uh, I would like to show where we are. With, uh, on this picture, you can see all of the, all, 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 all of the cloud, uh, uh, cloud stuff. On the very bottom, you have infrastructure as a service where you can basically uh, look at the different cloud providers, same as, as virtualization providers, as the bottom layer. On, uh, on top of that, you have the platform as a service with a uh, with bunch of different, uh, different stuff, such as Heroku, uh, OpenShift, uh, and much more. 
when you move up, you, you, you get to the, to the level where you have uh, software as a service, such as uh, Gmail, uh, Gmail from, from Google or uh, some calendaring services and much more. You have business application on that level. Uh, so with, with uh, cloud forms that I would like to speak about today, we are at this level. Uh, sorry, we are at this level. We are on top of the infrastructure as a service and we are sort of making an umbrella that's on top of the both, both, both these sides. We are trying to cover both the cl cloud brokering, different cloud providers and the classical uh, infrastructure based virtualization such as VMware, RevM and uh, uh, others. So we are trying to provide a single layer on top of these that will allow the businesses to have the same, same, same set of processes, uh, have a single view at all of this, the possibility to, mi uh, possibility to migrate uh, things from, from here to here and uh, do it without, without disturbing their core business. So what is, uh, what is, what is cloud forms? So cloud forms uh, covers a bunch, uh, bunch of areas. We will start with insight. Insight is the function that allows you to see inside your virtualization technology. It allows you to look deeply into your existing uh, VMware installations, into your existing uh, RevM installations, into your accounts on uh, EC2, into your uh, OpenStack, and it, what it does is sort of uh, Russian doll drill, drilling. You know, it's a US software, but it has Russian doll drilling. It basically means that it goes level by level deep and investigates everything and drives everything into a database. What I mean by everything? Of course, uh, you have those management systems, such as the, such as the control node from, uh, from an OpenStack or the uh, vSphere control node or stuff like that. Then you have also the individual hosts where you run the, uh, run the, the, the compute nodes. Or it's it's call, called hypervisors on the, on the virtualization uh, on the infrastructure level. Then you also have all uh, different uh, types of image storages, iSCSI based or NFS based. All these uh, cloud forms digs, it reads the data, makes lists, categorizes. So, so, so it gets the list of all your hosts, or of your virtual machines, of all your templates, stuff like that. And then it does not stop, it goes uh, inside. It takes a look at the image formats, then it looks at the, at, the, at the partition table, then it reads the partitions, and that, then it uh, checks what type of operating system you have. And for the most, uh, uh, most widely used operating systems such as uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and uh, Microsoft Windows, it actually reads the registry files, uh, reads the list of install, installed software, and, uh, <coughs> for example, your SSH configuration, IP tables configuration, stuff like that. I would say all the uh, stuff that's relevant from, uh, let's say, some uh, policing point of view. So, when you have all this, all this data uh, from, from the Russian doll drilling, then uh, you also, uh, what, uh, what uh, CloudForms also does, it listens to all the events that happen in the, in the virtualization or cloud environment, meaning, uh, for example, VMware uh, fires a bunch of different events uh, that, uh, for example, when a VM starts, when a host go down, st stuff like that, also statistical information that you can collect. Uh, same applies for, uh, for all, the, all of the stuff that's happening on the message bus in OpenStack. So, uh, so CloudForms listens to these events, uh, let's say vendor-specific events, and has roles that, that turn these events into system-level events, system-level meaning, uh, a level where cloud forms understands wh what's happening, such as, such as some specific event is turned into a VM start on the, on the level of, of cloud forms. So <coughs> this is the other, uh, this is the second source of, source of information uh, in, uh, for, for cloud forms. Then once, once we have all this, uh, all this in a database, you can imagine we can uh, report on the top of that. We can search for machines that have uh, particular software installed, that, uh, that has some peak, peaks in, uh, in load, uh, and uh, so, so we, can, we can view the stuff, we can report it, we can, we can provide various, various ways that the user might uh, want to take a look at the data. 
Then the next step is control. Once we have all this data, we can also interact with the, with the systems. For example, we can prevent some action from happening. Uh, for example, if someone tries to, tries to run a VM, we can prevent it. Given on the data that we have, uh, that we have about that VM uh, and about the host in the database, we can, for example, prevent a VMware user or RAM user for, for, from running an instance or, or from migrating an image. So we can, we can take control of what's happening and we can write policies that prevent uh, certain type of things. Once we have, the, uh, once we have this, it's, it's natural to move to the, to the third step. No. And that's aut automation. You can imagine that in a large, uh, large uh, business such as a bank, everything takes time. If, if, if a team applies for some, for some machines, it, it uh, has to be approved by someone. Someone has to provide IP address, stuff like that. There are many systems that, uh, that uh, you have to fill in data in and uh, many people have to say acknowledge stuff like that. And it may take, it may take as long as several weeks from your request to, to its fulfillment. So one, uh, one more area where uh, CloudForms uh, works is the area of automating these processes. For example, using CloudForms you can set a so you can set up a catalog of services uh, for, your cust uh, for your internal customers where they can uh, order those services. By services, I mean, for example, a new machine for this special product that runs on top of Windows or a machine for development teams that de needs a Django running on it, stuff like that. So you can create catalogs of such services. You can have them parameterized. You can uh, then, uh, then have a process attached to it where someone will have to approve or it, it can happen automatically. And one of the success stories of, of, uh, of CloudForms is a bank where they use this tooling to shorten, shorten the period between requests to their fulfillment uh, from, from days to hours. So that's the automation. I will talk about it uh, a bit uh, later. And the uh, fourth four thing is the integration point where, of course, when a, when you want to come in, uh, with a product into a company, you cannot replace everything that they already have. They might have some, some accounting system. They might have some, some cataloging system. They might have their, their own IP management stuff. Uh, they, have my, uh, they might have uh, some uh, um, process management stuff that, uh, that handles their internal processes, where the IT part might be just only a small bit of the processes. So, so you need to integrate a bunch of uh, a bunch of different third-party applications into, into the product so that it can, be, it can be used by the customer in the uh, real-world scenario. So I will move to a different, uh, to a next slide. Maybe it's time to show you what it looks like before we say how great it is. So what you see here is, uh, is the interface of the application. It has a bunch of parts, all of which are configurable. For example, here uh, you are in the cloud in intelligence part where you have some really quick views at various stuff. You can create various reports and those can be uh, turned into charts. And then as the administrator of the whole thing, you can create various dashboards for, for, uh, various, uh, for various roles or for various areas of expertise that you need to address. And then you can, of course, uh, limit the number of stuff that each role uh, sees. Maybe to make sense of it, I will start by, by uh, speaking about the, the uh, role-based access system uh, combined with tags that's uh, behind all, all of the UI and th that decides what uh, each uh, role can see. So basically all of this uh, on, on top is, uh, is uh, some section that can be turned on and off. So if you look at configuration, then you uh, select uh, roles and users and groups. You can, for example, in the access control, you can work with users, you can assign them to groups, and then for those groups, you can see what parts of the UI the user can, uh, can see. Then the second most important con concept is the tagging. You, you can tag basically everything that you have in your, in, uh, in your virtualization and in in cloud environment. You can tag your hosts, you can tag your images, uh, you can uh, tag your templates and uh, 
you can uh, you can create your own uh, structures of tagging. For example, you might want to tag things based on the de department that has something to do with the with the stuff. For example, finance and development and, and operations stuff like that. Then you can have a different uh, set of tags for let's say operating systems. Uh, then you can have a different uh, set of tags for uh, for uh, let's say production or testing or or development. And then you assign those tags to your roles. For example, if you have a, a development team, you would want to, let's say, provide control over turning on and off machines that are tagged by development to the people from the development team. So you create a group development, then you, then you, uh, then you assign the development tag to all the machines, and basically you are done. And using this, you can imagine that by combining the areas where, where, where a role can operate and the set of tags it can operate, you can really create, in this very single UI, you can create very different views for different users. For example, if I log, uh, log out now and log in as a DB admin, DB admin user, I should see a different UI. Yeah, I have just one dashboard and only a services and conf configure uh, stayed here. So this is the way how, how this product uh, supports the, let's say, multi-tenancy. Multi different people can do different, different stuff with the product. Next, I would like to show you what actually the people or in, in the roles can, can do with the product. I will log in at a, again as the admin. So imagine you just, uh, you just in install the product, uh, well, as a, as a side note, uh, this product is being, being uh, distributed as an OEF file. Some of you might know what an OEF file is. Someone, someone knows what OEF? OEF format? Oh, thanks. Well, you know that OEF should be some, some let's say, uh, format that's, uh, that's uh, provider independent. It should, the same OEF should work on, on different, uh, different systems. But the truth is we, we provide OEFs for VMware and OEFs for uh, RHEL and OEFs for other uh, other systems. So basically, when a customer starts with, with this product, he gets the OVF that he deploys into his virtualization environment. So he does not have to, to uh, run into details such as installing the stuff that you have seen. It might be quite complicated to install. But you get a pre-install image in the form of the OVF, so you can deploy it into your VMware or RevM or whatever. And uh, in, a in a couple of minutes, you can be up and running. If you, if you get the OVF, you will, you will have to start by, let's say, importing your, your virtualization and infrastructure stuff into, into the system. So we would start, start, uh, start by using the auto-discovery feature of the product where you would, uh, you would add your VMware and uh, provide, uh, where is it, discover infrastructure providers. You would basically enter the, uh, an, uh, an, uh, a range of, of addresses uh, and the product will do auto-discovery and uh, uh, display you a list of all providers that are available in the IP range. Then you can register. Of course, you need to provide some credentials because we need to log in into the RevM or, or, op uh, or uh, OpenStack or whatever you have to, to do the Russian doll drilling so, so that we, we, we see your stuff. So once you have done this, you, would, uh, you can start with the inside. You can start looking around what you have. If I start from infrastructure, I, I can see, for example, clusters here, which represents the, the top level. I will show you, for example, host. It's, it's very small on this display here, but let's, let me just try to change the view. Okay, so you have a bunch of different uh, different views. You can, uh, d depending on how many how many stuff you have, uh, this this thing ca uh, thing can support basically the rule of the thumb is uh, you have have one instance of of cloud forms per every 300 uh, virtual machines. So, uh, but in in the real time setups you have like you can have 10 of of, of them or even more so it's, you can imagine that the, that the scale that we are speaking about is is, is quite big uh, here i want to demonstrate the what the inside looks like there is an icon view where you can see uh, the icons uh, split into s several regions 
for example, here below, if we are looking at, at virtual machines, we see the technology that's being used for the virtualization. Here we see the operating system running. Here we see the status of the, uh, of the VM. And here we see a number of snapshots. The shield on top of this uh, means there is some policy being applied to the, to the virtual machine. I will get to policy, uh, policies later on because it's really where the power, power lies in. So here, in such a quick uh, overview, you can, you can see what you have, what's the status. And if you uh, click on it, you can see some details, such as operating system, I don't know, uh, number of uh, service packs installed, uh, hardware, oh yeah, here it is. Relations. So a bunch of properties that are, that are found out uh, about, about the particular VM or, or template or whatever you have. For example, here we have some, is it a Windows machine? So we have, what do we have? I don't know what every single Windows machine has. So we basically, yeah, here we have kernel drivers, uh, applications, stuff like that. <coughs> really, really whatever. And of course, uh, from, this <coughs> from this place, you can do a bunch of things. You can create snapshots. You can start, stop, migrate. What you would expect uh, from, <coughs> from a virtual infrastructure management tool plus some, some more stuff, so for example, tools for, uh, for migrating between different, different uh, providers where possible. Of course, there are some, some compatibility metrics available. You cannot migrate from whatever to whatever, but only certain, certain parts are, par, uh, are supported, but it's uh, changing rapidly as we are adding features. So for what applies to virtual machines <coughs> also applies to hosts. There's another icon view. Just the icons have uh, different meaning. Here you have a number of uh, running virtual machines. That is the state of the host. That's the technology. And uh, this is basically if we can see there, I, I believe. This means that we cannot see in the, into that host at the moment. So this is some, uh, this, this, this comes, uh, comes uh, this goes with you through all of the product, uh, anywhere you look. If you look at uh, image stores, if you look at management systems, if you look at hosts, virtual machines template, you have this type of icon that uh, tries to, let's say, pick up the most imp uh, interesting stuff from the, from the status of the, of the object that you are looking at. Uh, so, of course, uh, if I have run everything, because we are, now we are not running from some, uh, from some, uh, uh, from, from some uh, virtual appliance uh, where we would normally be, as you have seen, I have started all of, uh, some, some basic necessary processes uh, on my laptop, so I will try to click something, but I do not promise it will work. I would like to show you some, for example, performance data. If we, oh, not here. I will try elsewhere. If we will get the utilization. I have to check if I have the task that calculates the stuff running here. Oh, I will write it. So basically, here I am simulating that, that I have those workers running. On the laptop, I have only the, the role that displays the data that runs the UI. And now I have run the role that calculates the reports so that you can see some data. This, this provides you also some information about the architecture of the stuff. It's, it's uh, split into tools with many different workers. And these workers can be deployed several times so this, uh, this is how, uh, how some redundancy uh, works in, uh, in, uh, in this application. You can have uh, several appliances running on, on, uh, on, on your data center with different uh, roles. Some roles just display the UI that I am presenting. Uh, other roles uh, collect the events from the, from the virtualization tools and, and from, from the cloud. Uh, and convert it into system events in the application. Other roles cal calculate the reports. Other roles might be responsible, for example, for provisioning new, v new VMs as the users uh, request them. Uh, other roles, uh, there's, for example, is the data app. For example, you have several data centers. You might have your own set of cloud forms in one data center, second set of uh, forms in different, uh, in a, another data center across the world, and you still want your management to see the, over, uh, the, the overview of all. So you can have a robot that will push the data up and have a single instance that 
will not be able to provision anything, but will just be able to provide the reporting and insight into what you actually have so that you can monitor the health and capacity and let's say charge back for, for, for what you are, uh, the co cost, costs or uh, charge back for what you are running. So I will carry on uh, now on with, uh, as in the role of the, let's say, admin guy who would like, he started by importing all his stuff, now he can see his stuff, next he can, he can start and stop things. So I have already shown you the buttons, I believe. And what next my, uh, my the guy want, uh, IT guy want? He might want to create new, create new virtual machines, stuff like that. I can look at, at the data store where I will see my images, I can work with them, where are my images? For example, here I have a data store, and in the data store I, I don't have any, any templates in the data store. It doesn't matter. So, let's say that, uh, that I'm not the IT guy, that I am uh, some, some uh, let's say, end user, and uh, all I want from my, uh, uh, from my IT department is uh, run an instance or two from time to time, such as I may want to have a new, new uh, machine for my development team to develop some internal application. In that case, I, for example, could set up cloud forms to only show the services the services tab here, and I can have a predefined set of services that I want to provide my internal customers. Then I, I just provide a simple interface to order these services. I will try, try to click on some service. And yes. For example here, here, here you can see uh, structure of catalogs where I have services that can be ordered. Again, I can apply tags and, uh, and uh, assign tags to roles so that, for example, guy from one department may order only certain, certain type of services and stuff like that. This all can be done, done uh, in, this, in this interface. Then I simp simply click, let's say, order here, and I get an error, okay. And if I, d <laughs> if I do don't get an error, I can actually actually see some pre-configured uh, pre dialog where, for example, I may need to provide some additional parameters for the, for the service that I want to order. For example, if I am a, a manager of a development team and I want to order a new machine for the development team, I want to provide, oh, <laughs> I, 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 I need to provide, let's say, the environment that will be running there. Will, be, will it be a Python machine or a, or a, or a Ruby a little bit of Java stack there. Will I need Postgre or Oracle, stuff like that. So this is what I can, what I can provide here. For, for different types of, uh, of uh, services, I can provide different types of parameters. And once I submit such request, it can either be automatically processed or someone may have to approve my, my request. That's the processes that I can, uh, I can program in. There might be complicated processes behind, behind this. There's, there are state machines that drive all these, all these processes, such as provisioning, and, uh, and I, can, I can create complicated sets of, of machines that, have, uh, that will be provisioned with single click. Uh, there's, a very, there's a very rich uh, interface for, for ir interacting with, uh, with the application, both from outside using web services or from inside, where you can provide your own code that will transition the internal, uh, internal state machines from one state to another. For example, you can provide your own code inside that will uh, assign IP addresses or, or will uh, choose the right template for the user uh, to, uh, to provision. So basically this, this interface is one of the parts that the that, uh, end user would see. Here he would see how his orders were processed. If he got his, uh, got his, uh, pro, uh, his request uh, uh, um, confirmed or not. Uh, because we are running uh, out of time, <laughs> I, will, uh, I will now ask you if you have any questions. For example, if there are any people here who actually run a data center and have some particular need, needs about what they would need to do, I can answer, answer your questions and requests and tell you if, if this product could actually meet uh, what you need. I have mentioned chargeback uh, previously. 
So uh, because this is what I what I hear frequently from people. So if I go to cl uh, cloud in, uh, cloud intelligence chargeback, then I have everything that I need to configure chargeback here. I can assign rates to for compute and storage, for example, to tags, so that I can tag machines and then then assign using those tags I can assign costs to those machines, and I I can see the reports uh, from from the chargeback here, so that I can uh, I can either um, make people accountable for their spending internally or externally. If I, for example, want want to sell part of my data center uh, uh, capacity out of the company. So, are there any questions? Okay. Um, oh, I believe, I believe you can, but I, I will not tell you how you can do it because it's, it's really, really, you can do basically everything, but <laughs> maybe I have a screen, I have a screenshot uh, somewhere with a, with a chargeback report that displays also, also memory but I'm not sure if I have left it in the presentation. Oh, this, this is an example, exa I don't know if you can see anything actually. Oh, this is an example of a, of a very detailed uh, chargeback report. I, I believe you can do that, but I, I, I'm not sure how. So uh, are there any, uh, any other questions? Okay. Oh, that's the, the nicest thing about it, uh, you don't. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know all the details, but there are various backends being supported. That's one of the reasons why we can't use the other open source tools for this kind of stuff. Because, for example, the code that we have can work with stream-based uh, RESTful API that some of the uh, backends provide, as well as with, let's say, you can ma ha have a, a snapshot made, download the snapshot, and analyze the snapshot. But tool, I know there's a bunch of tools, uh, open source, that, uh, that can do some, some of this. But, for example, none of them can be used on top of the stream, stream, uh, stream interface. For example, I, ca I can ask VMware for a page. It gives me, it gives me back the page. And I can, I can read the, the partition table from that. And then I know I, can, I, have to page, uh, I have to fetch number X, stuff like that. And uh, many of the tools that are available, for example, uh, require you that you somehow mount the stuff that you want to investigate. But it's uh, agent your question simply. Any more questions? Okay. Yeah, this is this is possible, <laughs> but I have not prepared it for the for the demonstration. Basically, there are there are uh, state machines that that expose the individual steps, and you can uh, you can provide your op your own code into those steps, and you can interact between various various uh, state machines. So, for example, if you have uh, let's say some bigger deployment that can consist of of, of more uh, more uh, virtual machines. That the state machine of the deployment ne needs to interact with the individual machines. So it, this, this is stuff that can be done. Okay. Well, I, th this is one of the areas where I uh, really don't feel, don't feel expert, but you can go into Automate, and in the Automate Explorer, you basically have your data store where your, where your methods are, are stored. And there's automation. You should be able to start it, uh, to find it here, but I am not sure. Sorry, <laughs> I, I will find it for you for you after the presentation. But I would need to click around uh, to, to search for it for the moment. But it can be okay. Any other questions? For example, for from here, here you can define the methods that will. The that will get called when, you, when a customer orders a service. I have shown you a di dialog where you can uh, fill, in, fill in a bunch of parameters uh, to parameterize the service for, for, a, uh, for an end user. And from this explorer, you will pick up the method that 
that handles that, uh, that request. So it will start some state machine that will handle the request and will before that will provide some, some additional information so that the process can start, such as pick the right IP address or uh, let's say uh, select the right VM template, depending on the technology that you use. Any more questions? No? Okay, so we, are, uh, we have already spent the time uh, for this presentation. So I hope I have at least shown you a small bit of the product because it's really complex and you would have to spend a couple of hours uh, uh, exploring the product and its possibilities. But at least I hope I have shown you some of it and thank you for attendance. slice. <laughs> As you have seen, I did, I did not have uh, any slides. <laughs>